I advise you to throw yourself, to propel yourself into all the places that are darkest and that you fear the most. They are going to be the ones that set you free. Believe me. Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to talk about uh, the hero's journey and sort of thread my personal experience with it into it. And overall, the journey of becoming aligned with your soul purpose, speaking your truth, embodying your truth, living your truth in alignment with your soul and what this does in your life, the whole kind of transformative process of shedding your skin and becoming something new. The gestational period of being in the cocoon, you know, and then emerging from the chrysalis and flapping your wings. The first person who acknowledged that the hero's journey was a pattern in mythology was Joseph Campbell. And no doubt, you know, since time immemorial, the hero's journey is like built in the design of the human being's experience in transforming from ordinary to extraordinary. And it's a, not only a spiritual process, it's a physical, a mental, emotional process as well. It's body, mind, and soul. Um, all together. So it, you know, and it has the dark night of the soul and it's, it's the painful death and rebirth of spirit and body and mind. So I want to talk a little bit about that and the stages and sort of like just how to navigate it in 2020. What propelled me into my gestational period of transformation on my hero's journey and the dark night of the soul and my Kundalini awakening was my twin flame connection. So we've entered 2024 and I'm just now in the return stage of the hero's journey, which has been so very interesting to, to, to see in hindsight how it has um, blossomed. The process of it makes logical sense to me now in a mystical fashion in hindsight, whereas during those, the majority of those three years, I had no idea what was occurring and what was going on. So, and I'm going through the return stage challenge as we speak, which is so interesting but it feels great because I, I feel as if I have the upper hand. I know what is happening. I know how to handle it. Um, it makes sense to me. So it's like challenge accepted. So let's just get right into it. Um, so like I said, for me, the Kundalini, my Kundalini awakening, my twin flame um, connection was the, the catalyst for the call to adventure for me. So really what it is, it's just your soul is feeling a call for something more for, um, you know, something deeper, deeper meaning, higher purpose. Something just doesn't feel right. It's not fitting, you know, it's not working out for you. There's, there's a longing for more, you know, in this phase. And in this stage, we often don't even know what it means. You know, we don't even know what that means. You know, even though I knew my twin flame connection was changing me, I knew that my life was changing forever. I still didn't know what that meant for me. I had no, I, I didn't know what that meant that I was meant to do for the rest of my life. I had no idea. So that's the kind of the first call. And then like, you know, there's like a refusal. So it's wanting to, it's kind of putting your big toe in the water and feeling it out. But there, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear. 
but it's 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 interesting you know once the ball gets rolling there's no going back you know there's no going back and so what i suggest is it's very interesting i want to say don't force it but then force it as well you know it's a balance it's a dance we have to learn how to dance with life and one thing that i want to lay out right here is that we each of our paths are unique and our personal and unique intimate dance with all of life and creation is different from every other person's so you have to determine you have to feel out your own um your your own dance with life what does that mean for you what's a healthy balance and just take it moment by moment day by day and believe you me it'll work itself out because we are one with life we are the universe and for whatever reason we as source decided that we needed to come here to experience this so that we could understand our self and creation in a way that we otherwise couldn't so it's a combination of forcing yourself and not forcing the flow of taking action and falling back and resting and in spiritual mystical matters like this that means minute by minute that's going to be happening happening minute by minute um especially during a kundalini awakening in times where our energy is activated and we have access and reach in in our mind you know beyond telepathy um you know for me personally it's like everything flowing through i hear things i feel things i know things i smell things i taste things i remember things and it's not just me for my personal path it's many things it's many people and many things um right now in particularly and i believe that that's able to happen right now i know why it's happening for the most part but the reason that that has been able to happen now is because i've been i've healed through that three-year transformation i've healed my root chakra enough by you know speaking my truth stepping forward doing what i need you know know that i'm designed and meant to do in this life forcing myself not forcing myself finding my own dance with life to the point where i've healed my root chakra enough that i can keep my center and keep my balance so that now all things are flowing through me and that's just me that's just me personally i'm not saying that's going to happen to you but once i became grounded enough to the point where i wouldn't blow away i am now able to manage better the things that flow through me of the human experience and other soul connections and past lives and oh you name it you know so and really that is exactly what the hero's journey does is it helps you align in your chakras that's what it is that's what it's all about it's aligning you in all of your chakras your root chakra right up and down so that you can return better than where you started so the here depending on your ancestral trauma your personal trauma you know the the kind of soul connections that you've had throughout your life every person's call to action and transformational period that gestational period of spiritual alchemy that we call the hero's journey is going to be different and it's going to have um different levels of challenge and trial and tribulation for each person but i believe that you know each person depending on that set of trauma and what they have going on inside will probably perceive the hero's journey as the most challenging and difficult time of their life um but it's so rewarding i'll leave it at that it is the the most rewarding process 
It's the darkest, scariest, most terrifying process that a person could ever undergo. But it is absolutely so rewarding because it brings you into unity consciousness. After all the pain, after all the hate, after all the fear, it reunites you with the eternal love that is threaded through all of us and everything. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. So that's the, th there's the refusal. Okay. There's that, there's that time of refusal. I know I got off hand, but we're back on track now. And then there is the, ch I have my own list that I've written here. I'm not following like the, what you'd find on Google, the hero's journey phases that you find on Google. I wrote something down that possibly might be more relatable. So then there's the change. Um, and this is when you decide to force yourself and throw yourself off that cliff because it's too painful at this point to not follow that calling. It, it's too much bullshit in not following that calling that it's like, I don't even care. I'm going to go for it. And you throw yourself off this cliff and then you kind of, um, reach this point where your friends and your family are going to be testing you. It's going to blow you away. It's going to blow your mind because it's like, it feels like a spiritual attack. You know, you have angels that come in and then you have your adversaries, but your family and your friends, the ones who are insecure in terms of the things that you're choosing to change, the light that you're turning on is illuminating their darkness and they're going to lash out. And they're going to poke at you and they're going to prod you. They're going to try to reach up and grab you and pull you back down. And it's going to feel absolutely awful and terrible because this is exactly the trauma that you're working to overcome. And it, you, that trauma is coming to life like a little demon in the darkness of your psyche. And it, it's lashing out at you. And it feels like an attack. So... It's so important to remember that all of life is us. When we go beyond the physical reality to the unseen world, to the world that governs the universe, the, the universal laws, all is one. All is one and has taken on many different shapes, many different forms, many different colors, many different stories. But we're all one. It, that, and that is so beautiful to know that all of life is happening for us. I want to say us. I don't want to say you because we're all source, all of life, all of our relationships, our friendships, our companions, our lovers, our family, everything, every stranger that we meet is, is us. And we planned our lives. Every moment in divine timing has already been planned. So it's all happening for us. You know, the task is to recognize that shift out of victim mentality, which will always happen. It's that's the process. Oh, I'm being attacked. Okay. Wait a minute. All of life is one with me. There's something that's, um, teaching me something here. Okay. Most especially in the beginning stages. Okay. When we're first awakening and we're first, following that call to action, this we is, is very crucial that we remember. Um, later on, you know, once you've healed and once you start speaking your truth and, you know, then it becomes, then you, then you let go of that whole, um, every person is a sign that I meant to take to heart kind of phase. And even in that beginning phase, I would say, don't take it to heart. Let it flow through you. You know, just let it flow through you. What, you know, and maybe just examine it. But it can feel like a spiritual attack. So again, learning how to breathe with life, learning how to dance with life. But that will happen. You know, you're going to lose friends. You're going to lose family members possibly at first. You're going to lose people that were never meant to remain in your life. And things are going to, as you change, 
things are going to start changing around you. Earthquakes crack the ground and create beautiful mountain ridges to climb. We break down to break through. That is the natural order of creation. That's the divine process of creation. And this is where we have reached the point of no return. So we know that it's game one. You know, we know that we've made this choice. Life has responded. And now we are left with a clean slate that has left us in our deepest, darkest trauma, wounds, fears, insecurities. It's dark. Oh, it's dark there. It's very dark there. Um, and this is where you're being forged by the fire. You're being forced to look at everything that has long been hidden. All that darkness, you've, take, you've, cho you've chosen to take that torch into the caverns and the caves, the deepest caverns and caves of your psyche. And you see things that you never wanted to see there and that you've forgotten. So it is very dark and very challenging. And the dark night of the soul... will leave you feeling utterly alone because nobody understands what you're going through. You know, and there's a reason for that. There's a reason that during the dark night of the soul, everyone leaves you. That everything has changed. Everything has gone away. And you've been left in this kind of desolate, dark, foggy realm of hell within your own trauma and fear and insecurities. Because it's forging you in the fire to show you what your subconscious beliefs have been. Your programming and conditioning through childhood created the, pro the subconscious programs and beliefs in your mind that created all of the events throughout your life that are now resurfacing. And it gives you a chance to look at that. And by contrast, choose to change that direction and that belief. So we take a look at all of those beliefs. And then we, we start to, you know, we realize that we have to make changes. You know, we have to just do something. Something needs to change. So we start following the call of our soul. After that, that hell kind of those flames kind of die down a little bit. We're then able to, you know, stand back up and say, all right, let's move on. Let's carry forward. What will I do now? And this is the point where you start making those choices, whatever it is that you want to do, whether you want to write, whether you want to go out in nature, whether you want to, you know, uh, get a bike or a kayak, or you want to paint, or you want to cook, or maybe something entirely different. You know, whatever it is that you're attracted towards doing, even if you don't know, follow that first intuitive hit of what it is that you want to do. And when you start walking that path, this is when you're going to have people flooding in out of nowhere. They're going to come out of the woodwork and they're going to support you and they're going to compliment you and they're going to help usher you into the next phase. And there will most likely be adversaries as well. People that are, again, because the, the hero's journey is a process in which we must claim who we are, claim our worthiness, and develop our confidence and self-esteem. And that's something that can't be done without the adversaries to test us. How could we know who we are if we didn't have people testing us and challenging us to say, no, 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 wait a minute, this is who I am. You know, otherwise you would just remain a child forever. You know, da, 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 da. you wouldn't even know who you are. You know, it's a good thing, it's a beautiful thing. And remember, all of life is you. It's amazing. You're a god, you're a goddess. Every single person 
Don't let anyone else have you think differently. Sure, we have to go through the phases where we feel like a, a pile of poop, you know? But we that has to happen to remember that we are God and that we are goddess. We're everything and nothing, you know? That's the whole Taoist perspective of life and who we are in creation. You know, it's the yin and the yang. It's the hot and the cold. It's the good and the evil. It's the 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 everything and the nothing. You know, it's it's learning how to flow, and you will learn how to flow in on this journey. And when you when you know, for me personally, like during my dark night of the soul, I was called you know, to a lot of things. I was called to be out in nature. I was called to start making more art and, and getting a bike and a kayak and, you know, all these different things to travel, get, you know, get a camera and just start dabbling around in the things that I had always liked to do. Now I see clearly what my future will hold. And my future is many things now. Um, it always has been, but now I see clearly, I see, I can see clearly now the rain is going, that, that song is real. Okay. That song is true. And that's something we realize when we spiritually awaken that the music, the movies, the mythology, the stories, everything throughout time, we are them. There's no separation between us. The horror movies are a reflection of the darkness in our psyche, not being able to escape, being doomed forever, being cursed, you know? Everything is a reflection. We have to figure out how to how to lift our own curses by living our truth and by going through this excruciatingly painful and challenging time that we're speaking on today. Um, and so when you continue to keep moving this piece, as I was saying, during my process, I would walk in fields under the moon in the day sky, feeling utterly lost, filled to the brim with despair. I had no, I could not foresee my future at all. It felt as if my life had come to an end. Um, and all I did, I, I held my pieces in my hand, not, not having a clue of how to move them, even though I had a lot of pieces going. Until I started to just move them one by one. Maybe I didn't even really know how I was moving them. Or maybe I had intention behind how I was moving them. It's a combination of both. And little by little, my pieces started to come together. And they started to click. And they started to make sense. So this is the, the place on this transformational process of darkness and being alone and healing your trauma is you just have to keep moving your pieces. Just move them every day, even if it's little by little, little incremental steps take you eventually to a place where you wouldn't believe everything comes together. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe. I'm standing here today and I look back and I see all those incremental moves that I made that I had no idea were going to lead me to where I was today. Just make the moves day by day. Follow your intuition. Follow the call of your heart. Allow yourself to bleed. Allow yourself to wade in the flames and to burn and be forged in that fire and allow that alchemical transmutation process to occur within your body, mind, and your soul. This is happening on a cellular level. It may be wise to educate yourself on cellular biology during this process so that you have an upper hand on what's actually occurring within your body in accordance to your spirit and your energy. Um, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And while the knowledge of what's happening with you on a cellular level may create more anxiety initially, just as it did for me, I advise you to still educate yourself. I advise you 
to throw yourself, to propel yourself into all the places that are darkest and that you fear the most. They are going to be the ones that set you free. Believe me, it's challenging, but they are the ones that are going to set you free, not the ones that feel safe. So like, uh, again, it's that dance. We can't, you know, go into the dark and then, and then come back to where I say, but go back into the dark and then, you know, dance it out, work it out, play it out. And it will sort out and it will balance out. It just has to be done. So as we keep moving our pieces and we continue to level up, because as I said, it's an incremental process. We'll start to see our progress. And then all of a sudden we'll be like, you know, we'll reach this point where we've come so very far that we actually see how much farther we have to go. And that's going to be another dark night of the soul where it's going to feel like that's stretching out and you're falling back. And that creates all that trauma that needs to resurface again to remind you by contrast where you're going, where you're heading, what you, who you truly are, what your belief systems, uh, belief systems need to be that you can change in order to align with your body, mind, and your soul. Because that old paradigm of fear and anxiety and struggle and all of that trauma is an imbalance. That's all. It, and it's just a program. It's just the belief system. It's not set in stone. That's the beauty of the hero's journey and all these transformative periods of the dark night of the soul is it shows you what you aren't. It drops you into the depths of hell that you are not. But that you have experienced that is a part of you. But it's, it's your ticket to freedom. Your deepest hell is your ticket to your greatest freedom. How's that for a paradox? And it shows you by contrast where you want to go, where you're meant to go. Don't believe that's a, a prison. It's showing you how to get out of it. It's, it's your greatest friend. As ironic as that sounds and as paradoxical as that may seem, and quite impossible to believe in the moment that we feel it, it is. And so you'll continue each time that you level up to experience more of your angels and more adversaries, you know, more, more of your tribe members coming in and reflecting back to you your perfection and your beauty and your magnificence and your excellence. And there will be your adversaries that can't stand you, that hate your light, you know, that, that um, want to put out your fire. And they probably don't even know why, you know, it's interesting. Maybe they do, maybe they're very clear on why you ruffle their feathers and why you bother them on such a deep level. But oftentimes not, you know, oftentimes not. What do you do in this situation? You simply keep shining. You keep shining because you res if you truly honor and respect that person that has hate for you, you continue to shine because you don't need to dull your shine for them. That's disrespectful to them as well as yourself. If you honor that person, you keep going, you knock them down and you keep moving because you know that that's going to help lift them up. An insecure person feels that they need to lower and dim their light for another person. Sure, all things are circumstantial, but generally speaking, we do not stop shining because another person is uncomfortable. We continue to shine brighter. Not in an arrogant way, in a way that is true to us, because that person that is triggered by you, that wants to throw water on your fire, is helping you to shine brighter in love and in balance and unity within yourself. So shine brighter, keep shining, knock them down and move forward. You know, 
Don't let them take you off your course. You know, and it's okay if you kind of feel like a wave, you know, and a ripple and it kind of knocks you off your center for a moment. That happens to remind you why you need to get back on, stay balanced and keep shining. And that will happen all throughout the process. That will happen all throughout this process. You know, different people, different souls will come in until you start developing and getting a greater sense of why you're here and what your purpose is. And if it's many things like me, you know, I'm a teacher, I'm a life coach, I'm an artist, I'm a photographer. There are many things that I am. And those are just, that's just in terms of masculine energy. That's just in terms of taking action. So where that will take off in my life, I'm really excited for. But I want to share that because I don't advise you to try to narrow it down to one thing. I advise you to be as much as you can be without restriction. The more that you can be and embody, the better, because that's going to that's gonna bring all the pieces, everything that you are attracted to, that you would like to do, that you have interest in, do it all and don't try to hold anything out. Don't try to box anything off because the more that you just let things flow and come together, you activate more of your soul and you create greater harmony and balance within your body in the alignment of your, your body, mind, and your soul. And because all of life is us and we are all of life, when we become clicked and aligned, our lives around us become clicked and aligned. It's that universal law of energy. It's the law of attraction. So don't try to narrow anything down. And if you have to narrow it down during this process, which you, you do, you have to, you have to kind of take, all right, let me, let me focus on this. Now let me focus on this. Let me focus on that. Let me focus. I, the, I, th I believe the more that you have within you, the more that you are, the more talents, abilities, and purpose that you have, the longer your gestational period is going to be. The longer your hero's journey and gestational period of transformation is going to be. That process is going to be longer and more drawn out because you have more to sort out, especially if you have a boatload of trauma. So I had it all. I was given it all. I, you know, life never, life did not discriminate with me. And I did not discriminate when I came into this life. I knew we, and this was already been planned. This was planned at the dawn of humanity with all of my soul counterparts. Um, you know, a lot of star seeds and light workers remember being told you're, you get to go to earth and they feel excited, you know, and they, they remember choosing their life, uh, challenges in their family for myself. And I believe probably most, if not all of my soul counterparts, we, we planned this, this was already planned, um, at the beginning um, at the dawn of humanity, you know, and it's also very evident to me that I was, uh, why I chose to incarnate in Baltimore, you know, and the family that I chose, you know, everything, it makes perfect sense. It does not mean it's easy <laughs> because it really has been anything, but, but it makes perfect sense. It hasn't been easy, but it's the greatest honor. It's the greatest reward. I would never have chosen anything different and I would do it all over again. So, you will feel that as well. And that is the greatest blessing because that's when you've reached harmony and unity and divine union within. You've accepted your path. You've embodied your truth. You have gone through every single encounter and experience day to day to be shown your insecurities, shown your weaknesses, and then you've taken the action, you shed your skin to change those situations, change your patterns. Um, and you've just worked absolutely everything out and you're reemerging back to where you began. And this is so interesting to me because <laughs> it's almost like you, when you return at the point of return on the hero's journey, there is a final challenge. It's like facing a final boss is what they call it. And 
it's once again another dark night of the soul and showing right back taking you right back into the core of your trauma and your insecurities and what you fear again to help um usher you forward to help keep you aligned keep you in your center and moving forward and for me personally i'm someone who embodies mystically speaking stories of the human experience mythology um through different soul connections movies and music like we are that it's not even that we align with it energetically sure we do but it, it is it is one and the same and so i have an immense amount of information and energy flowing through my body a little over a month ago i was in the er because my the left side of my body started tingling and it rapidly spread up throughout my arm and into my face and my head one night to the point where i was concerned enough to go to the er and my body has not stopped tingling since the mother earth has been flowing through me the human experience has been flowing through me and it, I've been, and, and I'm in another dark night of the soul as we speak in this very moment. But you see how easy it is for me to verbalize it because I'm aware of what is happening and I accept responsibility for my life path and my shadows and my insecurities and my trauma. So while embodying all of that information, my, my whole body has been tingling and burning. Um, burning for a few days, but tingling for over a month. And, but I've been awake. It's like Kundalini activation and I've been aligned energetically, perfectly synchronistically with all of life and magic, absolutely magic. And in my DNA has been awakening who I truly am and my power as a divine being and creator. So this has, this is, I just want to share that's my personal experience in my return phase as I continue to carry forward and allow my journey to unfold in reaching wholeness and fulfillment and being victorious. I already feel victorious and that is why I'm able to speak it so truly and freely because I am victorious. I am victorious. I see my future. I know what lies ahead of me. I just have to take the steps day to day as we all do. I mentioned in another video how interesting it was that all of this was planned, but that we have to take it step by step day to day. We have, we have to take our avatar through that process. So don't give up against all odds. And above all obstacles, persevere, persevere, prevail, be victorious. Everything that you need is already within you. The more that you activate within, that's when it starts showing up in your physical reality. Understand it on, in that way and on that level. Become and you will receive. It's already within. It's in the cells of your body waiting to be awakened. And our cells are changing all the time, every day. All the time we're changing. We can't see it with our physical eyes. But every single moment is change. Change is the only constant. You know? Every astrological shift is changing the direction and the course of your life. Every thought that you have is changing your body. Your thoughts can heal you. Your thoughts can make you sick. Your thoughts create your reality, your beliefs. Don't give up. Take it day by day. Keep one foot in front of the other. Educate yourself. Embody your truth. Honor your life. Fight for love. Fight for unity. Fight for what you believe in. Fight for what you know is right. Thank you.